Mary Gillum, uh, Mama always had a cook. And her last cook up here was Mary Gillum, and she lived out on the edge of town. And she worked for us for years. She was our, we, we, we were old enough not to have a babysitter anymore. Um, so, and so Mary was mostly referred to as our cook, but she also helped clean, helped Mama clean. Mama cleaned with Mary. It was, Mary didn't do it all by herself, but she was Mama's helper, and she uh, did the ironing um, here. She sometimes took the ironing home. Somebody else washed our clothes. I don't know who, the Miss Harbert washed our clothes at, and ironed them at first, and I don't know who washed them later. We did not have a washing machine and they were not washed and hung on a line here. But anyway, they ended up needing to be ironed. And I remember sitting on the steps and talking to Mary as she was ironing my clothes, my dresses. She was very careful about making my, my, my skirts very smooth and very, she'd go around them and if there was a wrinkle, she'd go back around and I'd say, Mary, after I put the dress on, no one's going to see that wrinkle on Mary say, no, no Miss Martha got it, and she iron it and get rid of that thing. If she took it home, she did not have the electricity. So she ironed it with a flat iron, and uh, eventually she gave us her flat irons. She did not have electricity. She never did, but she gave us the irons because she had stopped ironing it at home. But <clears throat> And Mother... Um, took care of Mary after Mary got older and retired. We never thought of it as retiring, but after she no longer could work, Mother took Mary and uh, some other people. She always took them down to get their food stamps. She burned, <coughs> oh dear, she had, as she called it, an old piece of a stove. She had a wood-burning stove and the oven door didn't catch and so she had to put a piece of stove wood against it. She propped a piece of stove wood against the door to keep the door shut and uh, she was building the fire in her stove and she fell between the stove and the wall and she was really very large, and she, her body touched the hot stove, and she burned herself on the stove, and she pulled herself away from it and <clears throat> walked down to the neighbor's and used the neighbor's phone to call Mama to take her to the doctor because she was badly burned. She came home and she shoveled the, the coals out of the stove and took them out and spread them on the road so that Mama's car would not get stuck when she drove up to the house with all this hot, dreadful burning. And Mother got there and saw how badly she was burned and told Mary to pack a suitcase because she would be at the hospital for some time. And Mama took her to the hospital, but Mama said it just totally grieved her that Mary did all of that work so that she would not be, you know, get stuck when she came up to, to get her. She, when, I get you, when Mama died, uh, Mary had come to the fu Mama's funeral. And when we, we pulled up in front of the church, and Mary was standing outside waiting to be taken into the church. My sister-in-law was sitting beside me, and she said, you know, I think the one grieving the most for Mama is Mary. And I looked at her, and Mary really, Mary had lost a dear friend when she lost Mama. And she died the next, within six months of uh, mother's death. I think she 
just gave up. 